Hi Blender fan and welcome once again to Blender TC. And don't forget, if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's begin. Hi Blender fans and welcome once again to Blender TC. In today's tutorial we're going to use the hook modifier to make a satisfying animation. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is actually make an hourglass shape and we're going to do this so first of all what we're going to do is scale this so scale our cube scale in the x direction by pressing the s key then the x key by 2.5 so we've now scaled it into an oblong shape we're now going to go into edit mode by pressing the tab key so go on you've got point select up here line select and face select select line select select this line and control and r what we're going to do then is press the 2 key immediately after and this actually gives us two lines. We're then going to actually select this middle line again. Control and R again. By 2 by pressing the 2 key and left click twice will fix it. I'm then going to press the S key to scale this. But I want to scale this by a specific amount so I'm going to put S by Point one five, and as you can see that's now scaled this ring by that amount Control Z I'll just undo that just so I can see the other way you can do this is going to face select select this line there press the alt key down select this ring here and then press the scale, the scale key which is the S key by point one five and as you can see now we're starting to get something that looks a bit like an hourglass just to actually finish this effect what we're going to do is we're going to add a modifier we do this by hitting the spanner or wrench here add a modifier and we're going to do a subdivision modifier and i'm going to do this by three press the tab key to come out of edit mode and smooth shape this shade smooth so we've now made our hourglass shape so We've made our hourglass shape, so I'm now going to go to the hourglass, which at the minute is called cube, because that's what he started off as. And I'm going to double click and just change this to hourglass. You don't have to do this. It just helps you to find things later on in the tutorial. So we've made our hourglass. Press the one key to look from the front on your nine figure pad, if you've got one. If you haven't, you can actually go up here and you can actually use this to to uh, look from different directions. So we're looking from the front by pressing the one key. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a and so add add a mesh and a cylinder. And what you've got is you've got this little menu down here where you can change how many faces the cylinder has and in this case I'm going to make it have 16 faces because I don't need that much detail right. so with your uh, cylinder selected I'm just going to scale this down to point 0.1 so press the S key and then type in point 0.1 as you can see we've now got a little cylinder it's hidden under the hourglass so i'm just going to scale this in the z direction by 10. so we've now got a cylinder that's in the middle of our hourglass and what i want to do is hitting the one key is just move it down g and z g is to move or the go key and move it down just below this line here in fact i'll just move it just about there and I'm going to move it G following these grid lines I'm going to actually move it so it's like sitting in the middle of the actual cylinder in the middle of that line there so G and X and I'm just going to move it to about there I'm now going to hit the free key and I'm going to move this now down um, along the Y line by pressing G and Y so it's about there so we've now got our 
cylinder. I'm just going to add a little bit more detail to the cylinder. So go into edit mode. And what I want to do is go on line select. I'm just going to press the full stop key, which makes me zoom in on the thing I've got selected. Select that line there. Control R. And I'm going to put a loop cut in there. Well, I'm going to put two loop cuts near the top. Control R. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to actually attach a hook to this. Because in this tutorial, we're going to actually cover the hook. Control R. Just to put that. And all I'm doing is Control and R. And then moving it down to the bottom. If you get messed up with this, Control and R, for instance, and you are stuck with the, the loop in there. Control Z will actually undo your last move so you can actually sort it out the way you wish. Now I've got that cylinder selected, I've gone in and out of edit mode and I'm just going to go on smooth select. As you can see, we've got a bit of bad topology up there. The way we're going to cure this is we're going to select this top face and E to extrude. S to scale, I'm just going to scale it in slightly, press the tab key and as you can see that's now made a lot smoother a cylinder. What I've now got here is I've got the hourglass and the cylinder but what I want is lots of cylinders so I'm going to add a modifier by hitting the wrench or spanner here, add a modifier and the modifier I'm going to add is an array modifier. What an array modifier does is recreates the first object. And if we were to actually increase this to 14, you can get as many as you want, uh, as many pillars as you want. In this case, to keep it simple for this tutorial, I'm just going to make it seven pillars. And looking from the front, as you can see, these pillars don't go across the actual full length of the hourglass. So we're just going to actually cure that by changing this X value here. And if we increase it, as you can see, they spread out. And I'm going to do it so the actual, this center cylinder is on that blue line in the center. Which will mean 3.8 possibly, uh, possibly 3.85. So we've got a little cylinder there. And that's more or less dead center, and which means that that last cylinder is about the same distance on that side and that side. Now what we need to do is we're going to add another array modifier. So select this little, oh sorry, add modifier, add another array. This has actually recreated it down there. And what we're going to do is press zero in the top and change this Y to one. As you can see, we've now got three cylinders, but you can increase this to as many cylinders as you want, like we showed you earlier on. But what I'm going to do to keep this simple is keep it at three. And looking from the side by pressing the three key, I'm just going to increase this amount until that center cylinder is in the center of that blue line. And just keep increasing it with your mouse button till it's about close and 3.9 looks like it's about right for this tutorial all right so we've now got a cylinder uh, uh, hourglass there and these cylinders so what we're going to do now is we're going to just apply the modifiers to actually finish off our cylinders go to this little arrow here and I'm going to put apply and apply so now all these objects are now one object as you can see and if you take it in out, out of edit mode it allows you to actually go in and out let's look from the front at the minute, minute we have got a um, our hourglass so I'm just going to go into the animation tab here press the one to look from the front and as you can see, by default, it's got 250 frames. I'm just going to change that to 360. Like you've got 360 degrees of a circle, 
because what I'm going to do is actually spin this by 360 degrees. So go to the first frame, which is one. You can go to 360, which is right at the end there. Uh, in frame one, I'm going to actually select the hourglass, select it to attributes there, and then I'm going to press I to insert a keyframe. So insert a keyframe, location, rotation, and scale. This just does everything. And then I'm going to take it to the end frame by pressing shift and the right arrow. Or you can actually just type it into 360 in there, which will take you to the end frame. And then I want to actually rotate this around the Y, which is the green, uh, the green line there. So by 360 degrees. So I'm just going to type 360 and press I to insert a keyframe. If I press the space bar now, as you can see, we get the hourglass spinning. But at the end of the actual hourglass, you'll see that it slows down to a stop and then starts going again. What we want to do is make this spin round constantly. So the keyframe that we're gonna, what we're gonna do is go into key here, interpolation mode and go on linear. That just means now it's a linear animation. You must, of course, have your hourglass selected when you actually select linear animation. And looking at this, as you can see, it shouldn't stop when it gets to the end. Here we are. So, back to frame one. Select frame one. And what we've got there is we've got our hourglass turning. But we want to give the impression that these towers here are actually lifting and lowering the hourglass. So here's where the fun begins. We don't need the hourglass at the minute. So what I'm going to do is press the H key to hide it. You can also hide it by just hitting the little I up here. But H also hides it. Sorry, H hides the hourglass. Right, let's go into the pillars. Like I said, for this animation, we're going to use the hook modifier and this is how we use it. So I'm going to actually select the actual top face. So if go face select, select that ring there, select that ring there, and select that ring there. And then we're going to grow the selection by control and plus one, two, three. And that's selected all them faces up there. And now I'm going to add a hook to this. Right, back into the modeling just to make it easier. To actually see things so right there what we can do is had there's two ways to add the hook one is actually through vertex so you hit the vertex tab and press hook to new object so i've attached that up there i'm now going to select the second one plus 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 control and plus 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 and I'm going to add another hook to that, which is hook to new object, as like so. And the quick key for this, control plus plus plus. The quick hook key is control and H, and that just fetches up that menu that you got by pressing vertex then hook. It's just a lot quicker way to do it. So I'm just going to quickly add hooks to all of these. So I'll select the top three. Bum, bum, bum. Oops, went too far. Control and minus will actually take it back. And I'm going to control and H to add the hook. And same until you've done plus, plus, plus. Control and H. Hook. Select the top of the R pillars. Plus, plus. Control, plus, plus, plus. Too far. And control and minus will actually take it back. And control and H will add the hook object. And the last one here. Admittedly, in the animation that you see at the end of here, 
I've used a few more pillars, but you could add hundreds of pillars if you want to. It just makes it a bit more complex and a bit harder to do, but it's up to you how many pillars you have. Control and H, add the hook. So now we've got hook objects attached to all of these. So what you've got from a hook object is you actually, I've gone back out of edit mode now, but because they've, I've attached the hook to the top of them faces, if we just grab the hook and G, as you can see, we can move that anywhere we want. Control and Z, just to undo, you know, any hook, we'll just move the actual ones we've attached it to. As you can see, that's really messing it up. And Control Z, this one does it. So now what we've got is looking from the front, Alt and H to unhide our hourglass. We can move the hook, G and Z, just into the places we want them to be, G and Z. The only problem is that you accidentally keep selecting on these. And all we want to really select is the hooks. So here's a little trick for you. What you've got here is a little funner, funnel. It's actually for the filter. Hit the filter and you've got this little arrow here. And this means that it's selectable. So if we now go on to, say, our hourglass and select that to actually turn selectable off. As you can see now, I can't select the hourglass. And if we do the same for these pillars, uh, let's rename them pillars. Plus it's not so, let's just call them pillars. So I'm just, right, so I've got my pillars and I don't want to be able to select my pillars either. So I'm going to deselect that, which means that now I can't select the pillars and all I can select is these hooks which of course, she control the pillars. Control C to undo. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my default position for my pillars and I'm just gonna move these all up into, just so this dot is sort of going on the line of the hourglass, like so. G, Z, doesn't matter which one you actually select because they're all selectable, so G and Z. So, we're now looking from the front. We're gonna go back into our animation tab. So, we're in our animation tab. Press the one key to look from the front. And what we're gonna do is, what I want this to do is record whatever I do with any movement of these hooks. So, the way I do this is, you've got a little button down there called Auto Keying. This makes auto keyframes so press the auto key. Pressing the auto key now means that if I actually move any of these, it will make a keyframe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the end frame, control, shift, and right click. I'll type it in here, and I'm just gonna slightly adjust these. Oops, it is it. Control Z to undo. G and Z, just to move it up and down in and I'm just moving it G and Z. And as you can see, every time I move one of these, it adds a keyframe. So, G and Z. So I want the starting frame, creating, and the starting frame, I'm just pressing the G key, because they're about in the right position. Back to frame one, which is there. And I'm just going to add a keyframe into these by just selecting them and pressing G, which will just add a keyframe G into each one. The reason I'm doing this is because I want a starting keyframe, because the start is the same as the finish, and the finish is the same as the start. So we've now got our keyframe. I'm going to now advance this by the frames. You can do this by hitting your arrow keys and move it across. I'm just going to take it around the 50 marker there. And as you can see, this one's in midair. So I'm just going to move this down G and Z just to make it small. 
and as you can see that changes that to minus 2.8 so I'm going to call that my default start so minus 2.8 so any of these pillars that actually are in midair will now fall because what I'm doing is adding a keyframe minus 2.8 and what I'm going to do every 50 frames or so I'm going to just see move these up to about there just so it follows the line of the hourglass and this will give the impression that it's actually turning the hourglass in our animation so I'll take this to frame 100 same again that's an in midair so minus 2.8 that one's in midair, it's not going to touch the hourglass, so minus 0.8. That one there, as you can see, needs to be moved right up to the top. What we're doing there by actually adding these keyframes every 50 frames is making it so the actual computer works out all the in-between frames for us. So here we go. So it's working all these out. That one looks like it's moved slightly, so I'm going to put minus 2.8 because I don't want it to move up in the air either with that one, so minus 2.8. So if we play our animation so far, as you can see, it's starting to come together a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just add, go to frame 150 and just you can see just add some frames that's going to be catching that in a minute so G and Z and just following that line of the actual hourglass G and Z first of all do it every 50 frames and then anywhere it looks in wrong in between you can change because we've got that auto keyframe button on there so it's just recording anything we do and adding it as a keyframe to our animation that's still not that's still missing it so I'm going to put minus uh, 2.5 2.5 I think 2.8 it was wasn't it all right so I'm going to take this on another 50 frames to 200 and as you could see that needs to be down there to support that that needs to be down there and so on and so on and I'm just moving these up until it's, I get the desired effect. And this is a bit of a long any, um, tutorial, but you'll get the idea once it's finished. Same with this one, G and Z, so it supports the hourglass. All I'm doing is selecting the hooks. These hooks are really useful for specific time lapse animations. That's not exactly right. And as you can see, just a little bit of tweaking here. G and Z just to move it up there to the hourglass. G and Z. See, I mean, you could add this on every single frame. But this can save you a lot of work on some animations, especially if you've got hundreds of pillars that you've got to alter. So now let's just play our animation. As you can see, there's parts of it that look wrong in there. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't support the actual doesn't actually give the impression I mean the pillars seem to go through the actual the uh, hourglass so it just doesn't look right so what we do is we're going to look from the side and just by pressing our spacebar when it looks wrong like right there you can see that there that's passing straight through the hourglass so what we're going to do is I've stopped it more or less in the middle there at 275 and I'm just going to G and Z and just tweak it so put that down to there that one should be minus 2.8 for some reason it's going up I'm just going to move this to minus 2.8 in there just to make these smaller that one there just put it under there to support it and all we're doing is wherever the animation looks wrong We'll just, right, so I'm just hitting play, just to actually see there, 
that looks wrong again. So I'm just going to actually move that one down, GC. And whenever you change one, just look for the other ones. So they might need adjusting slightly, GC. But if you see a major mistake in your animation, that's where you want to add the keyframes. As you can see. So I'll just play that again. So playing it, as you can see, that's going straight through the middle. Looks rubbish. G and Z. Move that down. And what we're doing, we're just adding keyframes where we need to, but not where we don't. G and Z. As you can see, that's missing completely. So we have to go to the default position minus 2.8 <coughs> that one there G and Z put that to minus 2.8 as well and keep looking at your animation until you, you can step forward and back by putting the left and right keys on your keyboard as you can see that's passing straight through the center which is wrong so G and Z Put it down there and I'll just step the animation. That's still wrong. G and Z. Z. Just want it to stop there for a while. G and Z. As you can see, let's just keep playing the animation and altering it until you get to where you want to so so I'm just going to time lapse this a bit because I'm going to actually carry on adjusting these so just bear with me because this can take some time quite a lot of time actually I'm just altering the so it looks better to my eye but it's up to you how in depth you do things me personally I find this quite relaxing to do so say so it's just I'm not happy about that actually I'm just adjusting And that's about it, I think. So, let's have a look. As you can see, there we go. That's about right. So, all we need to do now is just add a bit of colour to this an HDRI. The HDRI I got from HDR Evan. So you go into the little world, put environmental texture, which turns the screen purple. I'm going to go to the place where I've put these on my computer. So what I've got is I made a shortcut on my favourites here, which is HDR Heaven. And the, the picture that I prefer is the Cavely picture because it has some really nice reflections. So I'm just going to actually select. Going to modeling. And as you can see, we still can't select things because all we haven't actually made them selectable. So I'm just going to actually make them now selectable by selecting this. Select our hourglass. I'm going to add a color to it. And the color I'm going to leave. But the normal base color which is white take the metallic up to the top take the uh, roughness down to zero and as you can see that's now made a mirror and what we're going to do is enable amb ambient occlusion enable bloom screen paste refractions which is the reflections of other objects as you can see, if I turn that on and off, you can see there's no reflections of other objects. It only reflects the room. 
So I'm going to turn it on and you can see that it actually reflects the pillars themselves. If I close it like so. And this material here, I'm going to go into its material and I'm going to enable screen press space reflections in that material which just makes a little bit better quality and the refraction depth you can change on there which actually has different effects it's entirely up to you what you do I'm just going to change these into like a gold color so new select a yellow same again well that's an orange but you get the idea fully metallic take the roughness down and as you can see we've now got like brass pins change it a bit goldy colored and slowly but surely we'll gain the animation I created the other day and you'll find that on my channel and I'm just gonna add a base so mesh just add a cube G and Z move it down scale in the Z direction G and Z And so I'm just going to, go into the normal mode, scale in the x direction just to make the q scale, scale it down, scale it in the y direction like so, g and z, move it up, make it a new reflection, so make it white again. I'm just going to change the roughness down to about there. So now it makes it partially reflective, but it's more like a white pillar. I'm going to add a loop cut base of this here. Control R just to get a sharp edge. And then I'm going to add Control R. I'm going to move on to about there. Control R onto about there and same on either side the reason I want to do this is because I'm going to add a subdivision modifier and make this so it's like a a round plinth or rounded edge plinth so add a subdivision modifier by hitting the spanner or wrench subdivide and what it'll do it'll just bend it from where I've applied my lines because I put the line sharp to the bottom bring the sharp lines just close together to there it means that we've now got a rounded base so I'm basically building up my scene now I'll just add a quick table add mesh circle scale it up add a face to it so into edit mode so, it's happening here. scale the circle up so let me stop this animation because what's happening is that I've still got that recording on so so it's recording all keyframes so X delete that I'm just going to go into the animation and take my keyframe thing off because I don't want keyframes recorded now so I'm just going to add in a circle into modeling add mesh circle scale it up so I want a round table tab into edit mode F select the circle F to fill the face I'm just gonna quickly model this so I'm just gonna go to that face E to extrude S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale, just make a little table, move it down, G and Z, uh, add a modifier, make it a, sorry, add another colour, new, make this my table colour, so make it black, slightly metallic, slightly reflective, by taking the roughness down, smooth shade it, and get the idea. 
And you could add different textures to this. So the material is not showing uh, reflections very well, so I'm going to take the, take the roughness quite down. And you can add other effects like going into shading and add in, say, a shader, let's say, uh, texture, like a Musgrave texture. And if you actually add that into the roughness, go. And you can see that. That's a strange effect. It looks like a bucky table. Now, are you getting a bar maybe? Take it right up. And you get some strange reflections. I'm going to render mode. As you can see. We've now made our scene up. The only thing we've not done is we're looking through our camera there. If you move your camera, add, a, add an empty mesh. Empty. That's going to be focused with my camera. So I'm just going to add a set of arrows. So that's me focused for my camera. So select my camera. Go on here. Add object constraints. Track 2. And we don't select the empty that we've just created. I don't know the name of that empty, so I'm just going to actually select the empty I've just created, which is that one. So it's empty seven. So I'm just going to make the focus of my camera empty seven. So back to camera. Select the camera. Just do this again so you can see it easier. It this looks like the bicycle chain going around the cogs and track two. And I said it was empty seven, so track to empty seven. This means that when I move my camera now, it is still pointing at my scene. So I can actually move it about going from seven. I'm just going to move it back a bit and G and Z just to move it down and empty seven, which I'm going to just move down G and Z just to actually fetch things into the center. And just move the camera back a bit more just to back to there, I think. As you can see, now we've got a picture of our working animation, and then all we've got to do to actually create the animation is we go into here, put where you want to save it, change it to FFmpeg video, give it a name. So, in my case, I'm just going to actually save it to where it should be, which is. D drive, I think I call this spin art or something like that. So blender work zero spin art except that because that's where I want it to be and render render one and then all you've got to do is go up to here into the render tab and then render animation. So I'm quickly going to do that. Render animation. And where it does, it actually draws it frame by frame by frame. <laughs> it's not playing. Right, stop the render. For the best effects, I would uh, do this render in cycles, which is found up here. But you can do it in Eevee. It's entirely up to you. I just think there's better light when you actually just render that out. Render image just to show you. Like I say, it takes a quite a bit of time for it to actually draw this kind of render. And if we were to do the actual render with Eevee, 
render image. I think it's a bit poorer image. It actually is. It looks better when it's done with cycles. Thank you for joining me on this tutorial. And please subscribe. Bye for now.